millions and millions and millions of people love Frozen in Anna. If you can, in your own words, why? Wow, it's hard to articulate why people love Frozen because I don't really know. I mean, I'm biased because we spent a lot of time on the first film and the second building a story we felt was important enough to say, to put on screen. And we tried to make it about real problems, acknowledging that kids can see complexity and struggle and suffering and, and relate to it. But then we have to sort of reduce all of it to a kid-appropriate film. But I think maybe that's why. I think when kids saw it, the first one they saw how Elsa was struggling being shy and vulnerable and really powerful. That's hard to reconcile when you feel both those ways. And uh, I think Anna served more as an example of prioritizing familial love. Um, and I think they're going to love the second one for those same reasons. We deal with some pretty complex storylines and they're un easily understandable for kids but their ideas like what do you do when you're out in the world who are you what drives you what's your passion and what happens when you find out that your the history of your family uh, maybe your family didn't behave in the ways that you think are most appropriate what do you do do you try and learn from history and how do you act now and uh, where do we find Anna uh, at the top of Frozen 2 the top of Frozen 2, everything is perfect in Arendelle, which means very <laughs> shortly we're going to pull up the rug from under you. Um, everything is nice and everyone's content, and we sing a song called Some Things Never Change, which is obviously a little tip of the hat because everything's about to change, um, because Elsa starts to hear a voice, and it's no one else hears it. It's a calling, and she... Uh, really believes that it's calling her to tell her something about why she is the way she is. So our whole family, Kristoff Sven, Olaf, Anna Elsa set off on this pretty epic adventure uh, that's pretty dangerous beyond Arendelle. They go into this enchanted forest, they meet a whole bunch of new people, and um, yeah, they learn some histories about the, uh, they learn some facts about the past that threaten the future of their kingdom. That voice, uh causes Elsa to venture into the unknown and uh, Anna DePaulo. Can yeah. you tell me why? Yeah, I think when Elsa hears the voice, she's so taken with it that um, Anna has no choice but to follow. I think when you have a true, deep, egoless love for someone else, you want them to succeed and you want them to be fulfilled. And I mean, that's certainly the way I feel about Adina is, is a parallel to this relationship Anna loves Elsa so much that even if they disagree, um, it's important enough uh, for Anna to see Elsa's dreams come true. Change is a big theme in this film. How, uh, in what ways did, does Anna change? I think Anna has a little bit of a road to self-discovery, similar to what Elsa experienced in the first one. We got a lot of how Elsa... Um, uh, discovers her self-esteem and her self-worth and who she is in the first one. And in this one, Anna's dealing a lot with her codependency. And uh, we've previously only seen Anna really living for everyone else. But this sort of forces Anna to look inward and acknowledge um, what she does uh, when she can't live for someone else. I'm going to get kicked out, but I'm going to ask this one question. Yeah. Um, the Lopez's wrote a, a great song for you, The, ne the Next okay. Right Thing. Yeah. Can you talk about working with the Lopez in that song and then a Mount Tony as well? Yeah. Um, the Next Right Thing came from a long conversation with our creators about what we wanted Anna to go through in this movie. And personally, I use that mantra, just do the next right thing, when I'm feeling codependent or when I'm feeling anxiety or depression because it's hard to figure out what to do when you don't know what to do. And again, I think that we gotta give kids the benefit of the doubt. They feel those things and we don't, we're uncomfortable talking to them about it because they're an extension of us. We want them to be happy. It's okay, you're fine. But I think sitting in those feelings and just bearing witness to it helps people get comfortable with uncomfortable feelings. So you'll watch Anna go through some very uncomfortable feelings in this and use my personal mantra, which is just do the next right thing.